Welcome to this presentation, Kanban for Software in 5 Minutes. I'm going to explain how we use the principles of Kanban to enhance our software development process as a lightweight alternative to Agile. But you can also use the principles I explain to enhance your Agile development process. I'll start by explaining what the problem was I wanted to solve. Our team had a lot of work in progress and very little was getting through to done. So of course if you've got a lot of work in progress, the average time to complete each task will only increase. This could be for the whole team, or sometimes there were specific individuals that were causing the bottleneck. The result was that while we promised a lot for each sprint, we actually delivered a lot less. So how did Kanban resolve this? Well, I'm going to start by explaining what is Kanban using the Mrs. Robinson implementation. Mrs. Robinson, in this case, being my mum. In our house at home, we had a kitchen cupboard which contained beans, tea, milk and chocolate. And we also had a cupboard under the stairs which contained beans, tea, milk and chocolate. When I came home from school, if I was hungry or thirsty, I could go to the kitchen cupboard and take what was in there. So let's say on one day I took the very last tea bag, the very last drop of milk, and the very last bit of chocolate. And that was fine that day. But the next day, of course, the kitchen cupboard didn't contain what I wanted. But I had to deal with my mum. I could go to the cupboard under the stairs where she'd put a blank piece of paper. I could take the tea and write on that paper, tea. I could take the milk and write on the paper milk and take the chocolate in the same way. Then once a week she would take that piece of paper to the supermarket and then she was able to restock the kitchen under the, the cupboard under the stairs. This piece of paper is what we call the Kanban, that is the visible card that tells us what we need to restock and when. So how will this apply to software? Well, if we have our whiteboard or progress board showing our, th our three states. We have all our tasks on the board. What we can do is add a work in progress limit. That's our Kanban limit of five. So what we're saying is we're only going to allow five tasks or five post-its in the in progress column. So if someone wants to start working on another task, we can say no. First of all, we have to complete something in, in progress and only then can we pick up that task. And we can also use that number in the to-do column, which means we can pick up other items, but if someone from outside, a project leader or a customer, says, hey, can you start working on this now? We can say yes, but first of all, you've got to get rid of one of the other items in this column. So applying this to our team, what we can say is we're going to have our limits, so Nigel is, can transfer one task away, but all the rest is going to have to put on the backlog so that we now focus on just a few items and get them through to done. And that number we can also apply over multiple columns. So for example, we can apply it to a coding and a testing column. We can have, for example, one item in code and four in test, and it will still fit within the five maximum for both. So that number we can also put per column, like this, three items in code, two in test. And how it works in theory is this. Let's say we get a high priority item suddenly. The idea is that because our in progress columns are full, the whole team swarms to clear out what's in in progress. So in this case, they're going to move one of the items from test, then they're going to swarm over to code and get one of the items from code done, and then there's room for that high priority item. Although in the meantime, of course, the test column is now full, so they'll need to remove one item from there as well. That's how it works in theory. What I saw in practice was this. We got a high priority item in the to-do column, so we said, and now we've got five items. Maybe that to-do number is too low. Let's put it on five. And let's someone says, I'm going to start working on it. Well, maybe that three under code is too low. Let's put it on four. Another high priority item that fits within our to-do column, but once it moves over here, maybe we have to increase this number again. And before long, our work in progress limits became meaningless because we kept, we kept increasing them. It's very hard to say to a customer or a project leader, 
I'm sorry we can't start working on your task because it violates our work in progress limit. That doesn't mean anything to people outside the team. So we introduced something which I've called Kanban-ish based on a presentation I heard at a Kanban conference a few years ago. Basically the idea is that for each item we say it's got to be less than or equal to two days. If you have an activity longer we split it over multiple post-it notes. And for each item we age it. So we say when it's one day old it's a baby, two days old it's an adult, three days it's an old man, four days it's dead, and five is a zombie. So on our progress board we have a number of items and we mark on with stripes how old each item is. So we go to our, plan our daily stand-up meeting and we say okay um, I've been working on this item because we're interested in lead time not effort time so everything in in progress gets aged. We say okay I might have finished this item um, I'm still working on this one and I start working on this one as well. And then we immediately have a question. Why would you pick up that item when you've already got uh, a dead item, four days old? Shouldn't you finish that one first? Or maybe that one is a high priority item, the new one. So that's acceptable. So this way of working enables us to focus on getting throughput done as much as possible. But it also says when high priority items come along, we can immediately respond to them. So in summary, Kanban is simply a visual card. We uh, theoretically can add Kanban limits, but they didn't really work for us. So instead we aged our items. And that, in a nutshell, is Kanban. Unlike Agile, we don't necessarily need burn down charts and planning poker at the start. We can use them, but what we can also do is this very lightweight system, which is a lot easier for us than introducing at a full-blown Agile. Any questions or comments, please contact me. Thanks very much.